It comes down to this, Chiefs fans. DK Metcalf, Jamison Williams, two blockbuster trades that have already been outlined by some people like Matt Miller. Can this stuff happen? We're going to tell you right now on Locked on Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked on Chiefs podcast. Just got off a... uh, yeah, I just, uh, just got off a podcast over in the UK, and they kept saying Locked On NFL Chiefs. And I'm like, now it's in my head. So everyone, friends and neighbors, people around the world, welcome to Locked On Chiefs. This is going to be fun. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for free on every platform, including YouTube. If you'd like, sub and hit the bell over there. We'd appreciate it. And if you would subscribe on your audio platforms, that always helps us too. I'm Ryan Tracy from RogueAPC.com. That's Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting. The draft guide is out as of about 20 minutes ago. You can go purchase that now, and it has everything, film grades, the athletic matrix, as well as all the production metrics that have been growing over the years. You can get a discount if you use that code Locked On over there at RogueAPC.com. How are you, Chris? I'm good. How are you? I'm tired. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, dude trust me i think you can probably guess where i am as well um yeah i'm exactly right there with you two more days until my deadline uh or just a couple more days till my deadline uh really quick chris clark fan of chief's corner go check it out uh had an article go up today talking about the cost of the linebacker group uh both in draft picks and in in cap space been going through a whole bunch of different articles have another one dropping on saturday uh, about the tight end group so something to look forward to there um when we talk about things and i know what we said we we're going to talk about and i do want to touch on those just want to throw this out there i am so happy that the chiefs don't have to worry about a qb controversy or anything with the qb asking for more money because what's <laughs> going on in arizona right now is just ugly yeah but that's why we don't get paid to cover them because that gets crazy what we do have to talk about is cost not necessarily with a quarterback but cost of trading around and there's two mm-hmm. Big scenarios out there today as we get ready to wrap up the weekend. And we need to take a look at those because they're two scenarios we have not covered to this point. And we try, whether it's the mocks or the trade discussion or whatever it is, to give you as many angles on what the Chiefs could do as possible. So which one's bigger to you? You know, I think that you look at Matt Miller's idea. He laid out a, a, a trade scenario to trade the 29 the 50 and the 103 to houston to go get jameson williams at 13 mm. that's a huge that is move. a big trade yeah i don't know why the texans would do it from what i've heard from john harris their sideline reporter that is on the locked on draft show with me um there's no way they're taking a player there but in theory trading two number ones what was it 29 30 no, and no, no, 2950, not not 30, 2950. Okay. Okay, so you stay in the first round. Right. So you you, you go you still up, have two, two you still have two picks in the first round. Right. You're giving up a second and a third. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 to the point now where like you have to get as much value as you can, but if that were to get it done and he's available, that that'll be the key. Like I can't pull that off until they're on the clock. As right. far as I'm concerned. But that gives you the weapon that you're looking for. One of the only players in this draft that I do feel is worth trading up for. And it's costing you a reversal of position. You know, honestly, that's okay with me. It's almost because I think the. Sorry, I was just going to say it's almost costing you what they got for Tyree Kill. And I know Mm -hmm. people will hate that. But at the same right. time, here's my key, and here's something that Matt said that I think needs to be pointed out because I think it is a huge key here. One, it's cost controlled. He'll make what eight million, nine million dollars for the first four years of his contract. Mm-hmm. And second, he's 21. <laughs> Tyreek is 28. There's a huge difference there. And that does the matter. Rest. Yeah, and I don't care how good you are, eventually everybody falls off of a cliff, uh, especially when you are a speed based player. So the, the clock is ticking for sure. And so that's true. And here's the big thing is, yes, that's a lot to give up to go get a player that's coming off of an ACL and a player that only has one year of major production. Fair enough. But in supplanting him into the Chiefs offense, you can see it like that. And as long as the recovery is good, you can see him getting into that role where he doesn't have to be the alpha. He has time to grow into it. It's not like you're replacing one of the top three receivers in the league with a guy that has to perform to that level. He just has to do his part of the job 
just take the top off the defense and actually get loose like we saw him do all over the place in college. I feel like that's worth that because you still have 30. You still have 62. You still have 94. Yep. So for me, I would be a yes on that particular deal. Yeah, and I think I would probably be looking at that as well. I'd rather it be 62 than 50, but uh, you take what you can get. And I, I think the bigger thing is, is that still gives Kansas City the ability to probably trade back from 30 because I still think that that's an option at that position and maybe get into the later 30s and maybe pick up an extra fourth or a third or something of that caliber. And if they can do that, because somebody's trying to come up for a you know position where they want the fifth year option, they're going to be in a great position. Yeah, I, I agree. That's going to be entertaining as well because that takes some fire. And, you know, strange things happen when you set fire to things, especially in the draft when one team's on the clock and they're fielding multiple calls. You never know what you're going to get. So as a scenario, kudos to Matt Miller. I think that that's a possibility. And I don't feel like the Chiefs would get fleeced in that situation. I would bet no. that they can get things done that help this team. Yeah, and I think that that sets them up for a position where they have – and I guess here's my my question in that regard. And this is my argument when it comes to the 29 and 30 pick. Do you think, in your opinion, if Jamison Williams was not injured, would he be the number one wide receiver in this class? Yes, without okay. a doubt. Even with the injury, is he in your top three? Yes. Okay. So, to me, that's value. To me, you're getting yeah. one of the top three players at their position, and you're probably getting the best guy if he is not coming off an ACL. I don't even know he's a, if he's available at 13 if he's coming off not coming off an ACL injury. So agreed, he was yeah. my number one until that injury. Right, and he could go as high as five, six. I mean, I, I, I... thirteen, I can live with. No, no I understand that. Deal, I, could, I could live. With, I could live with eleven, but I ain't going in the top ten. No, 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 and I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying he is a player that could go that high if he was not coming off that injury. Right. But because he's going to not come off that injury, you may have an opportunity to get him, and I think that's what's important to look at. And, again, he's 21 years old. I'm not sure if he's 21 when the season kicks off or not, but it doesn't really matter. He's 21. He will be at, at most 24, 20, or sorry, 25, 26 years old before his four-year contract is up, and you're sitting there looking at a guy that could – really help your offense and it doesn't have to be Tyree kill. He's not Tyree kill, but he has some of the same traits, not the explosiveness, not the suddenness, well, but he has the speed. About here, it's a fifth year contract because you have that option. Mm -hmm. So that controls things a little bit more and a little bit longer. And I think that's perfectly fine. I wouldn't bet on him not doing it, but if I was gonna, I would go to bet online, your number one source for all your betting needs and all your sports info. You can find everything on every major development Every key date, every prop about who's going to land where and who's going to get drafted when, that's all up there. Baseball's up there. Hockey's up there. Even basketball. Is basketball still being played? Sure, they're up there too. It, it, it always – I just came away from like six weeks of hardcore draft work, so um, you never quite know. Um, all your wagering information, podcasts, eSports, playoffs, all, everything that you need over there is on their website. You can get there from your mobile device. It's the one place you need to go to put your money on the line in a smart way at Bet Online, where the game starts. And that's not the only scenario out there. There's another one that actually originated here on the Locked On Network that I think is pretty intriguing. Yeah, and the Locked On Seahawks went out and asked for trade proposals for DK Metcalf and for Tyler Lockett. Uh, and one of the proposals that came out was from the Jaguars. It was 33, 65, and 70. And the Seahawks took it. Now... I can't say I blame them. That's pretty high value for, I mean, that's two second rounders and a third rounder for DK Metcalf. Um, I get it. And they're going to be rebuilding. So congrats to the Jaguars if they're able to pull a trade like that off. Um, if you're Kansas City, that in my mind, at least without really looking at the charts, that would equate to basically 29, 50 and what, 94? Something like that. Yeah, I mean... It depends which chart you use. The charts are all roundabout. It's whatever right. I, whatever that GM wants to use. But yeah, in that vicinity, that's for sure. And it, it's correction, it is two third round picks. It's number one of round two, number oh, one right. of round three, and number 10 of round, yep. or number eight of round three. Yep. Two third round picks. That's still a pretty good haul. You're getting three picks that are in the top uh, 70. So that's pretty good right. scenario for them. Well, and if that's what you really want to do, I, I would tell you that, you know what, 
you can get do something really similar with the number 30 pick and swap that out for the 33 that the Jags have. Give them 62 for 65. And then maybe you can squeeze in 94 there in place of 70. Maybe you could move back to 103. There, there's things to be done. But again, that's that's a player that I think, unlike how I felt about the first one, that involves giving up a huge number of draft assets, guys that can play this season yep. in that number uh, 50 pick, the uh, 62, 93. All of them can play this season. And unfortunately, you put yourself back in the pickle that you were with with Tyreek, that you have to then go sign a, a 20 plus million dollar a year contract because that's going to be the going rate. Yeah. Now, and so, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say, so for me, that's the drawback. And unfortunately, that actually outweighs the positives of putting DK Metcalf in this offense. So for me, I would be out on that scenario. Fair enough. And I'm, I, I will admit, I'm going to play a little bit of Switzerland here, and I'm not going to really give an answer because I'm not exactly sure uh, if I would go for that scenario or not, mainly because of what you just said, and it is the cap. The main caveat and the main difference for me and the reason that I would lean into maybe considering that type of scenario is you're paying a guy that's 25, $20 million. You're not paying a guy that's going to be 30 in two years. True. And and his size and stature is one of those types that's probably going to last a little bit longer than a guy. Tyreek, if he takes one bad hit to – I mean, don't get me wrong. Any player is one bad hit away from being out of a career. But Tyreek is probably a little bit more susceptible to those hits than than DK would be. Yeah. Uh, his body I can, type. I can get on with that. That's that's a fair point. And the other, the other thing is Metcalf has a lot of speed. Don't get me wrong. But his game isn't predicated on just speed. He has such a large catch radius and ability in that regard that it also changes things as well. True. It, it, that makes him a little bit easier to deal with in terms of trying to get that value out of that contract. Right. But again, it's that dollars up front. It's that cap that oh, costs you from not only being able to pick, but to sign. And that's the problem is you then hurt yourself in two ways. In that scenario, you've hurt yourself by limiting how many people you can draft and keep on rookie contracts. And you've hurt yourself by how much room you have you spend in terms of signing other free agents. Yep. So that's like a double dip in the negative way for me. No, and I get it. And I am still on the edge of whether or not I would or not. I, I If you could get it done and Kansas City would head into the draft with only needs at edge and, and corner, I think I'd feel pretty happy about that. I know that giving up the draft capital would stink and you'd have to figure out the whole scenario of paying them and whatnot. But you have to figure, and this is part of the math that I'm coming into with it, is he's going to have a low cap number in 2022. It's You're going to have to worry about 2023 and 2024. And the cap, I think, is going to explode by 2024. So that makes yeah. it a little bit easier for me. The whole reason I was out on the Tyreek Hill deal was because they were going to have to pay him 25 to $30 million a year, and he's going to be 30 years old. Yeah. That's, that's a big deal. Well. No. And I know he's hungry. I'm kind of hungry. But <laughs> you're always you know. hungry. And what are you hungry you for? You got to do what you got to do. There you go. You're hungry for Built Bar. Our friends over at Built Bar, have you tried the puffs lately? And I will tell you, I have tried some of the puffs. They're very good. If you haven't been, if you haven't tried them yet, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They are fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Coconut marshmallow banana cream pie, very, very good different puff bars. There are several others out there as well. All built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, like I said. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bar with these. Most built bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. And that's a ton of protein in such a small bar. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. I want to keep exploring because what this has done is, is really highlight the fact that when you have two first-round picks, you can move one of them safely without feeling like you're not going to get any value. So if it's not Jameson Williams, say somebody goes crazy and the Atlanta Falcons pair him with Kyle Pitts at number eight and it's a done deal and it's all over with. They'll be crying in Kansas City and that's going to be okay. 
But then what do you do? How do you feel about other trades involving non-wide receivers? Because there is a precipice to say, maybe wide receiver is in the position that you want to invest that overly high. You could ask Raiders about Henry Ruggs, who was mm -hmm. the last guy in this position that was this type of player that just took the top off of everything. So for me, I'm still interested in exploring how high can they get up with 30 and 62 is the what I would be trying to do um, to try and get an edge rusher. And that's that's what it comes back to for me. But, is, uh, I Go ahead. Sorry. I, I just – we've talked about this a lot, and this is where I am on the edge. I just don't know that I would trade up at 30 and 62 to get a guy that's the fifth or sixth best edge rusher in the class. Why? Are they going to be able to step in and start? That's the thing is I think the best edge rushers here are probably hybrids. They can play either. And there's going to be, if you think Carl Loftus is it, great. I don't, but some people will and say that he's the fifth, but he and Cam Thomas are the best two that fit in Spag's system in terms of the oversized, the over bulky power edge that sets the edge in the run game and can still rush the passer. So in this particular scenario for the scheme needs, it allows you to not have to have the super bendy guy like Thibodeau. You know what I mean? Uh, and so, like, even though it, it might be the fifth guy overall, it's not the fifth guy for this scheme. So that's no, why that's I'm true. still thinking about it. That's true. I just, I guess I'm with you. I don't like the fit of Carl Loftus in this defense because he doesn't give you bend. It's just a power guy. He's not going to give you that speed element. So you're going to be kind of stuck in that scenario. Uh, and if you're going to be trading up for somebody, I'd like to have both of those in that case. Uh, I get the thought process of trading up for an edge, but if you're not going to get a guy that can give you both, that's going to be a little bit of a stretch for me. And the question I have is, is Mafe going to even be available 29? Uh, you know, if Karloftis goes in the top 22, is Mafe going to go before the Chiefs pick? That's, that's a good question. I mean, he could be pushed up there. He's got that ability, um, but it is, it, it's not as easily seen on film. It's it's got to be projected more. Um, when you take a look at say Karloftis versus him, Karloftis has more production because he's more experienced, right. and that's that's okay. I'm looking at like it, like he's number two in the bear rate. In fact, I should just share this because it'll make things easier um, when it comes down to these things. As you compare players, it becomes difficult to really harness it unless you get exactly what you're looking at. So if we take a look here, you can see um, here's Boy Mafe. Good, super athletic, but when you get over to the production rates, bear rate, th that's what he does up and around the line of scrimmage. That's tackles for loss, that's forced fumbles, that kind of thing. Not, not that high on it, right? Um, total TFL rate, pretty good at six. That helps. But then when you look at what you get, where'd Carl Loftus go? There he is. So he's productive across the board in tackles per game and sack percentage. That's how many times other pressures that he gets come out in sacks. Um, TFL rate, bear rate, like producing more because of his experience. So it is the projection thing. And then the guy that's kind of in the middle is Cam Thomas, where he's not the athlete boy is, except for the most important aspect to an edge rusher, that change of direction, running that three cone. And he's productive. So again, that just takes you back to where we were and, and why I've been kind of harping on Cam Thomas because of the fit. But it's it's that question. Do you go for upside or are you going for where a guy is day one walking in? And I think boy is more of a projection. And that's fair. And I guess that's kind of where, what I'm saying is that to me, we've talked about Cameron Thomas being a second round pick. So I don't think that you have to worry about him going in the first. Uh, I think you right. have to worry about Carl Loftus going in the first, but I don't think he's a great fit for what Kansas City – I don't think he's a great fit for the scheme based on what we've talked about and based on what I've seen. So could he fit? Yes. Is it possible they go get him? Yes, because they're desperate for an edge. But one of the other things that plays out, plays into all of this for me when it comes to the draft is a couple of other news pieces that came out on Thursday. Uh, Sammy Watkins signed a contract with the Green Bay Packers. Four million. Uh, ah, interesting. Who cares? Whatever. But Gilmore is also being linked to the Indianapolis Colts. He went to go visit them, and it sounds like they're really interested in adding him. If he signs with Indianapolis, that's a problem for Kansas City because that takes away one of the guys that they were talking to. Yeah. I, you can't be surprised too much, though, because no. Chris Ballard, 
his philosophy is very similar to what we have in Kansas City with with not just Reed, but uh, but Veach as well. So like that doesn't surprise me. Whether they pay him what he wants or not, that will surprise me. So let's see how that works out. Yeah, I guess my point is is if he goes and signs with him before the draft, that becomes a problem because Kansas City isn't able to get another corner, which would make corner not necessarily as big of a need uh, before right. the draft. And Melvin Ingram has already gone and visited the Dolphins. Now he hasn't signed with the Dolphins, so he, maybe he's available. But that all plays into how Kansas City is going to be able to draft in this dra- in this upcoming draft. And actually, as we're sitting here recording right now, it's two weeks away. I cannot wait. I know, right? We're ready to fire up. I'm ready to fire up. You can watch me and Crocker live on set on any of the streaming services, Roku, Amazon, all the stuff that uh, carries the Tegna feed. You can also watch it on their YouTube channel. So we're going to have YouTube here. We'll we'll be doing a little pre-show. Then we'll jump over there and you'll find me and Croc. I hope you guys are ready for it because I'm getting ready for it. Uh, this is going to be fun. Enjoy your weekend because it's only going to pick up speed from here. We'll be back Monday with a mock draft to take a look at some of those options as well. So you guys enjoy it. Thank you for being with us today and we'll talk to you tomorrow.